Okay, on a fixed pitch hub bar on a small blade, same thing as you saw out on the other rotor system. And this is for the 7 inch cord blade. And if you leave these three bolts alone and you remove from here, and you have the same type of adjustment. Now coming down here on an adjustable pitch hub bar, we have uh, this one is able to move floating. And this is a ball that floats as well. And then we're retaining the pitch here on each side with these shims. And we move shims diagonally from here and move them to here like this to change the pitch. And this blade will automatically lead and lag and flap to find its true position all by itself. Now to string this rotor blade, you should still string it to check it uh, for its first assembly. But we run a string from the split line on the blade here. Down at the end, you put a string and you can tie it on the blade, put it around maybe uh, the end cap screw, and then through the split line all the way to the other end on that. And then the string would run right through this center dot here in the blade. So when we string it tight, the line should run right through here. And of course, we want the string just running straight over the top, not dragging over the top, just floating in the air and that right through that center. Same with all the other rotor blades. It should be that way. But what we do first on the fixed pitch blades is that we string each blade individually to the hub bar so that they are not forward of the hub bar. The blades are slightly sweeping back. To check balance on your rotor blades, you would put it between two machined or tool steel risers like this. The blade is just floating free right here, and this bolt goes through, and it's suspended right here. And this then allows the blade just to float free. And if we go down to this end, we have a water level. It's just a hose with water in it. It goes from one end down to the other, and we want to put the water level, have it make sure that it's in the same place at each end on the blade, like the center of this screw. So you can back these screws out a little bit at each end or just check it on the blade. Now if you need weight added at one end of the other, you would put on a piece of lead at one end of the other to achieve proper balance. Of course this blade's right in balance so we don't have to do this. And then you take this screw out and put in this piece of lead and put blue Loctite on the screw and run it back in again and then the blades are right exactly in balance. I would recommend using lead rope like this and we have a little cutter and you can simply cut it off exactly to the size that you would need then to put inside the blade to get the balance. So, put the piece of lead on, make sure that the water line is in the same place at each end and then put that amount in the blade. Blades come factory balanced, tracked, ready to fly uh, sport rotors, so you don't need to do any of this. So all you'd have to do is in the future to check it, this is what you would do on any rotor blade. Okay, you can see the tab on the blade stuck on there. There's a reflector. It's able to move nice and easy like this. And uh, of course then you're facing the silver toward the inside. Um, we have a rotor RPM gauge. Rotor RPM is extremely critical, if you, especially if you have adjustable pitch blades. You don't want to be spinning too fast because you could pull apart your rotor blades. So if you, you can buy one of these from Sport Copter. It's a Sport Copter rotor RPM gauge. And it gives you the arc of where it's, what's good to be within. And most rotor blades run between 3 and 350 RPM. Uh, and here's a digital handheld, which are available from many different sources. And this gives you the uh, RPM. You just point it up at the rotor blades when the sun is shining through the top of them and the shadow goes by uh, like this and it registers an RPM, which it's doing right now. That's 140. It says 15, which is 150. And then there's 200. And it works by the shadow going by. You can even switch it over to three blade for your propeller. And this is a really nice instrument to get uh, to check rotor RPM absolutely true. And we use both when we test every set of rotor blades. We fly every set before we ship. Okay.
of lights going by. You see the reflectors going by. Of course, the video camera won't pick it up as well as the naked eye. And a, a dark contrast background. And you can see everything.